Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday. It is the Earth Master end of the weekend update. It is April 21st, 2024, 8.31 a.m. California time. Latest activity shows uh, a one-pointer out here along the West Coast. That's the latest earthquake on the globe. We did see uh, some larger scale movement up here across Iceland late last night. Uh, 5.4 earthquake coming into the uh, rift zone out here a, a ways away from the Grindavik area where our ongoing eruption has taken place haven't really seen any major swarming going on but uh, goodness kind of a, a decent sized earthquake out here looks like it struck at about uh, just 0.1 kilometers below the surface so this is a very shallow earthquake surface quake out here in the Iceland area and once again that's a 5.4 no major earthquake swarm following this five pointer, but we'll continue to keep an eye on Iceland. Uh, I do think this is turning into some type of long term event out here, far as the eruptive stage. Let's go ahead and check out the latest view here from Iceland. This is the ongoing eruption there, um, just outside of the Grindavik area. Looks like uh, that's the main active crater out there. Not really seeing a whole lot of fountaining at the moment. I did check this out here about an hour or so ago. There we go. A little bit coming and going. Um, of course, we do have some inflation going on underneath the area. Let me bring up the uh, Savart Singhi inflation chart, and I'll show you guys what's going on out here across the ice and area. So even though we still have this ongoing eruption that, uh, of course, has been going on for over a month there in Iceland, you think uh, this inflation chart would at least level out or go down, right? With the volume of magma uh, that's being sent up to the surface and then, of course, lava uh, at the surface levels, right? But nothing, nothing has changed. If anything, we are going up in terms of inflation. So I think we're leading to something bigger out here in the Iceland area. Uh, they even mentioned it there on their site. The Iceland Met Office uh, chats about the potential of another magma flow somewhere uh, it could be maybe an increase in the activity that we're seeing right now or it could be nearby or it could be in a different location either way we're getting some big time inflation going on underneath this area even though we're still seeing output of the uh, magma from below up to the surface so uh, definitely an interesting scenario uh, of what could take place out here and of course that five pointer 5.4 out there away from this area but within within the uh, rift zones out there uh, still um, you know leads me to believe that uh, we're, we're not over yet that we're just getting started in terms of uh, the potential that uh, is in the forecast out here for Iceland that 5.4 again or 5.3 looks like the uh, USGS reporting this is a 5.3 they're stating that it's 10 kilometers deep. I doubt that uh, the Icelandic Met Office there is showing 0.1. So uh, a tenth of a kilometer below the surface. Very shallow earthquake. All right, so we'll continue to watch that area. Definitely uh, some interesting movement up there with the ongoing activity. California, well, we, looks like we had another earthquake out here. Uh, or they added one. Looks like a 2.7. Now, this is the earthquake that... Uh, I was chatting about last night on my update. I believe that's the one uh, that had came in. It looks like they added that overnight. Uh, either way, a little bit of movement going on out here past or just shy of the Cascadia subduction zone. These are fracture zones and spreading seafloor center uh, zones out here. So uh, continue to watch regions of the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, the tremor last night was not that big of a deal. Uh, let's check out the Cascadia trimmer, not volcanic trimmer, but uh, trimmer activity between the two plates here in the subduction zone of the Cascadia. Only got about 31 epicenters of trimmer. Here's the M energy released over here. These are basically like slow slip earthquakes, but really not earthquakes because they don't suddenly release energy. It's just a, a slow vibrational um, pickup from the instru instruments here that uh, takes place between the two plates as they uh, subduct. So obviously, um, you know, a little bit more subduction going on here across the area. This tremor activity has been acting awfully strange here in the last year or so. Uh, prior to that, we had seen regular 
uh, occurrences of, of uh, large tremor events. And the last one was roughly about October 2022. Since then, we've only seen a handful of moderate tremor counts and uh, just very quiet out here. Something is definitely going on in terms of uh, not being normal, uh, for one, compared to historical data. So we'll continue to watch that. Um, it seems as though whenever we do get tremor activity out here, um, that, that it's leading to some earthquake activity. Even just like a little minor amount of tremor activity, it kicks up upstream here. So we'll continue to watch this. Uh, one earthquake out off the coast of Northern California from yesterday. That's a, uh, a subduction zone quake there at 20 kilometers deep here into the southern end of the Cascadia megathrust area. All right, uh, typical movement around the Clear Lake volcanic field, although what we've got going on here, 2.1 this morning it looks like. A couple other earthquakes in there as well. Uh, across the Lake Almanor area, looks like we had a few earthquakes out here yesterday that uh, I don't think they added those on the map last night. Sometimes it takes them a little while to review it. But uh, a few earthquakes up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. The Bay Area, a handful of uh, smaller quakes there across the Calaveras Fault Zone. And Southern California, looks like the swarming activity out here has died off for now in our swarm areas. We had a couple different swarms out here in the... Uh, Ridgecrest area over here in Nevada, outside of Las Vegas. Those uh, look to be uh, calming down for now, but uh, don't let your guard down out here in Southern California. Uh, and of course, typical movement out here across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Minimal activity on the Elsinore Fault for now. There's a look at the broader view of the country. Earthquakes out in the oil fields of Texas. A uh, couple earthquakes there in New Jersey from yesterday. Uh, about five of them or so. Nothing showing up today. A look at the broader scale map and uh, let's take a look at the world view. See what's going on out here. Quite active, of course, across the Indonesia Islands area. Quite a few twos and threes out there. We did see some newer activity in our quiet zone. This is a seismic gap area that really hasn't seen earthquake activity out here in a, in a couple days. Um, and it's almost always active. They did have a 4.6 here around the Vanuatu area. A fairly recent earthquake. Uh, and also a 5.1 out here, it looks like, into the Kermadec Trench. That's going to be this earthquake right here. 5 o'clock this morning, local time, my time anyway, so about three, three and a half hours ago. handful of other earthquakes there across the New Zealand area as well. Let's go check out the GeoNet servers and see what's going on here across New Zealand. Um, let's go to the all magnitudes here couple smaller earthquakes out there of course it's on a major plate boundary right so that's bound to take place a lot of activity underneath North Island area here recently that's been fairly deep 136 kilometers for a, uh, a 2.8 it looks like about an hour or so ago I'm still kind of keeping an eye here on the New Zealand region uh, for some further large-scale movement they've just been uh, seeing a lot of deeper activity here recently with no major movement uh, in terms of adjustment there across that plate boundary. Let's see here. I'm looking for that five pointer. I'm thinking this is going to be the five pointer right here that showed up this morning about three hours ago, but it's odd. Uh, it's really not showing up all that much on this station that's further up along the plate boundary. It's just barely a blip of a of a signal. It did show up here on a couple other seismograph stations. I guess they're maybe a little bit more sensitive, but you think they would show up on a station that's very close to the earthquake, but looks like this one's tapered down a little bit in terms of picking up any readings. As uh, far as that uh, goes, uh, there's really not a whole lot of further activity down south in the South Island for now, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. All right, uh, what else we got here? A couple earthquakes in South America, 4.1 there off the coast of the um, Ecuador area, it looks like. It's being reported by the EMSC model. And Alaska, handful of earthquakes up here as well. Some deeper movement quakes there with a 4.2 way up here into the uh, Lucian Trench, it looks like. 243 kilometers deep. Notice... This thing is starting to light up out here all across the Aleutian Islands, getting a swarm of earthquakes out here in this area uh, in a linear fashion. See that kind of pointing up towards the subduction zone. 
Now, these earthquakes, though, are very shallow, so it's possible this could be associated with volcanic activity out here in that region. The deeper quakes here, we'll watch upstream. Uh, you know, a lot of times we'll see those deeper quakes trigger some larger scale movement up here along the plate boundary. Uh, a handful of earthquakes here across the Kuro Kamachaka. The latest one looks like a... Uh, um, a 4.3. I thought I saw some more up here. Let me see here. Well, maybe that's about it. 4.4, 4.3. Maybe another 4 in there or so along that plate boundary. Uh, super deep activity there underneath the Japan region. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but there is a super deep quake here. That's going to be this 4.2. Uh, about 330 kilometers deep here. We'll continue to watch this area around Japan. That does look like it's into the uh, uh, portion of the subduction zone right here, under well underneath this area. Super deep quakes there underneath the Maluka Sea. Notice these rings being raised well off the globe. So we'll keep an eye on today. Definitely, uh, we got a lot of deep movement out here in the last 24 hours. So I'll wait for some further surface adjustment here. All right, had to take a drink here, clear the throat a little bit. Starting to get a little bit of wind out here, stirring up some pollen around the area of Northern California. All right, uh, 1.0 coming in, California area it looks like, the latest one. Let's check out space weather. I know I didn't get a chance to check that last night, did a quick update. Uh, but space weather, getting uh, still getting some flaring activity with a C3.3 right now as we speak. That does look like it's coming off of uh, one of these sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. Uh, looks like maybe up here, this one's a, got a little bright feature here, a little small flare going on within that region. Uh, this massive area, that massive complex of sunspots has just been sitting there looking pretty, but really hasn't done much. Um, they're starting to look a little bit more stable here today. Uh, there's still obviously some potential here within a couple of these cores that uh, can harbor some stronger flaring activity. But goodness, I had my hopes up, maybe a little bit too high for this area because um, it really hasn't been doing much of anything. That sunspot area that's producing the sea flare uh, looks like it's coming from one of these regions up here. Um, I don't think it was that far back. Yeah, it's one of those regions I just showed you there. They don't look all that complex, but... Uh, uh, you know, there's still always possibilities of any sunspots producing flaring activity, but uh, just looks like a little sea, fl sea flare activity there today. Um, overall threat, let's see what we got here for the flaring activity. Still 15% chance for X flare, M flare at 55. Sea flare around 99% chance here. And, uh, you know, I, if this if this area is going to do something here, it needs to do it really soon because it's getting... Uh, closer out there across the western limb and uh, we'll probably be you know out of sight out of mind here in a few days there's still uh you know there's still quite a bit of sunspot activity in there but they're not all that complex there in terms of the uh, magnetic stability that uh, those sunspots harbor so all right let's see you got anything else going on no major auroras in the forecast doesn't look like anything unexpected right now you know similar to that event we've seen here a day or so ago that was kind of an unexpected event we do have a little bit coming in a slight chance up there across the polar region there uh, north and i'm sure south area as well over antarctica uh, aside from that we'll just keep an eye on it right keep an eye on this well we don't really want to keep an eye on the sun but uh, we'll keep an eye on the charts severe weather out here today not a whole lot um, looking at just a marginal risk for some severe weather across portions of Florida that's going to be uh, mainly due to some wind and a little bit of hail out there across that area today over the next couple days minimal activity day three here is going to be Tuesday got a marginal risk here for uh, some severe weather probably going to be due to some uh, some hail potential and then as we get into day four day five things start to kick up here on um it looks like go back here a little bit day five stay at day five uh thursday into friday 
or Thursday to Friday, it's going to be a pretty decent chance for some severe weather across Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, and Texas. Day six, a little bit broader area, more to the east. Uh, they're pointing, these guys are pointing at potential for some severe weather those days, and they're sticking with it. That's due to a uh, low pressure system that's going to be parked over here, tapping into some moisture there that's coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we don't really have that much of an extended view because these haven't loaded yet. Uh, this is the newest model run. It only goes up to about um, uh, sometime in the afternoon there on Tuesday. And uh, can't really get a good uh, shot of it there in terms of what to expect. But we'll check that a little bit later on. Um, let's see if we got anything going on here at Yellowstone. Really not a whole lot going on. No, no major earthquake swarms. A small amount of earthquake activity over here it looks like. But that's very small, extremely small earthquakes. All right, far as the next five close approaches here from the NASA site monitoring asteroid activity. Goodness, the majority of these are well over a million miles away. Um, there's a pretty decent sized one. These are all expected to pass this close to Earth today. And that's con a uh, considerable distance there for a 280 foot building size asteroid. Uh, over 4 million miles away. So it looks like the closest one would be this 1 million mile uh, asteroid 44 foot. Now that asteroid that came pretty close to the Earth here a few days back, a week or so ago, uh, was about 11,000 miles. So very close to the Earth, but that one was only about 9 to 13 feet. And uh, it did miss us. Otherwise, we have we would have known about it. Would have been a nice little fireball in the sky, but that's about it. But as uh, far as these asteroids go, safe distance for now. Uh, it's just something I'm going to start doing here in the morning time, just to double check. And, uh, you know, kind of neat to, to look at. Whenever we get something very close to Earth, we can always click on these and go into the orbital viewer and check out more specifics of where the uh, path is in terms of the Earth plane and the uh, path of the asteroid but uh, for now we are uh, we're safe safe and sound all right folks have a good day seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet keep an eye on ison i know i was expecting uh, to see some big time aftershock activity or some type of swarming going on here following that five pointer but so far nothing but still uh, you know that type of activity out here got to keep an eye on the volcanoes uh, you know with that magma accumulation underneath this area it's uh looking likely that we'll see another eruption somewhere out here aside from the region that we're currently seeing it all right stay safe make sure you guys subscribe while you're out here click that notification bell so you can get notified when we provide some important earth related updates out here we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on the sunday night enjoy the rest of your weekend out here take care folks